right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of How to Do Drugs. Uh, today, I have one of my porno princesses here. I'm very excited, all the way from California, uh, Kendra Sunderland. Whoop, whoop. How are you, beautiful? I like your little top of sparkles, your titties all out. <laughs> I know. I was like, let me distract from my, like, I've been cleaning all day, face and hair. I Just like put it. Some titties out there. Most people never make it past that part anyways. They really don't. <laughs> and with me either. It's like, oh, wait, you have a face? It's like, yeah, actually, yeah. I put like food in it and stuff sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, thank God I have these because I don't know what I would do without them if I was like, <laughs> stuff. It's like boobs are personality. Some people don't, I, I don't think that they understand that boobs are like, if, especially when they're natural, they really are a part of our personalities. Like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's very, um, I love titties. <laughs> titties are great. <laughs> they Everything really does. are. <laughs> um, so I have known you now since basically since you started porn, I want to say, which was um, when you were just a little baby, when you were 19, um, you're in your mm -hmm. mid 20s now. <laughs> She's not happy about it. No, time flies so fast. Yeah. Oh, it gets faster as you get older, too. Just a little mm -hmm. forewarning. Um, it gets real, That's real good. fast. <laughs> it's kind of nice, yeah. though. It's kind of nice. Um you forget a lot of the bullshit stuff, like, like stuff that really that like bothers you now in like 20 years, not going to bother you at all. Not even like a little I bit. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It's amazing. I fucking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, now your claim to fame, quote unquote, is uh, because you got caught fiddling <laughs> in the library of your college um so that's kind of how you got popular but now um you've been in porn you've won a bunch of awards you're like one of the biggest name porn stars now you have a flashlight and stuff like that but you also have this new magazine that you just came out with called sex drugs and money and that mm -hmm. and when laney sent me that i'm like i have a podcast about drugs i need to get her on the podcast <laughs> to talk yeah. about that so, down. so tell me about um tell me about this magazine like what made you want to do it and like what's in it and stuff um yeah so i put a lot of effort into the first issue it's kind of like centered around me um i did like a photo shoot in my house it was kind of fun after like a night of partying. So it's like, you kind of get to see like what I look like when I party. And I did some streaking photos. Of course, mm -hmm. I had to get some public nudity in there. So <laughs> I ran around LA and took pictures of myself naked at an in and out and a gas station and a mall parking lot. Yeah and driving through these tunnels in LA and at a church this is the last nice. one so yeah <laughs> I just thought it would be a good like thing to add since public nudity is like my thing kind of I guess now yeah a little bit of an so, ex exhibitionist or whatever that's always yeah. been my thing too like even before I started porn like me and like the men that I dated like I've always liked having sex like I've had sex in a church parking lot before <laughs> or like elevators and stuff like that that's always been my thing like I don't care if people watch I just don't want to hear about it <laughs> later right? yeah, like, it's just so exciting to just take your clothes off in public I can't explain it but yeah we did that and there was um I wrote about um getting my instagram deleted which was a whole big ordeal and i saw that <laughs> whole thing in its own um well, there was even like mainstream news stories about it because like you had made a joke be like i'm blowing blah 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 and people are like she really is blowing him it's like you guys yeah. are retarded instagram and fucking facebook are actually shadow banning me now when you google my name normally has like your social media profiles instagram and facebook are gone and instagram refuses to verify me like refuses to verify yeah. me i'm like go oh, fuck yourself i hate instagram but you got a new account and I you're verified you. on it again that's get me verified yeah. on that bitch fuck instagram <laughs> well, for real it's a it's a little it's a love hate relationship more hate than love for sure but yeah yeah that was its own story so it needed its own piece in there and i wrote about um psilocybin research in Oregon because mm -hmm. that's where I'm from so it's very important to me to put that in there mm -hmm. and yeah it's just a super fun awesome fucking magazine showing me with drugs and like talking about drugs and sex and 
I'm excited to see what it can grow into because do you do all the really, writing and stuff for it like um, all the articles? I don't because mm-hmm. I suck but I've like I've like said my thoughts to someone and they put it down into words because okay. like I'm not good at that <laughs> but yeah I want I just wanted a place to like express myself I can't really do that in porn like or on my videos for my porn channel like mm-hmm. I didn't really show myself like as a party person in that so I wanted just another place so that I could explore that and kind of get creative with it and mm-hmm. just have fun and like be yourself yeah it's kind of hard to be yourself yeah. <laughs> in porn sometimes everyone like for me everyone's like oh it's the milf or you know or the teacher or something like that and it's like mm, yeah. <laughs> not necessarily yeah, I, like, I want to show something different something crazy something fun so I was like everyone loves sex drugs or money or if not like all three of them so why not yeah you know do you ever feel show. like, especially being in porn and sex work, that doing something, especially about drugs, that like it, um, are you worried about like the stigma? Maybe if people saying, oh, of course, all sex workers do drugs. They're always fucked up. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Were you ever worried about that? Uh, no, because everyone gets fucked up. Everyone does drugs. So, I mean, I don't really care. I'm not any different than someone who works on Wall Street or like, you know, there's like mm-hmm. people that party in their own stressful work. So I feel like hopefully people can see it's like separate. It's not like I'm out here like strung out, like showing you guys that, but I'm just like being shown with like a giant pile of like cocaine and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it just like, it looks cool, but I wouldn't say I'm necessarily like, you guys got to like kind of take it like it's a fantasy type thing not mm-hmm. like real life like I don't really have a giant pile of cocaine next to me like cutting up lines on some girl's ass like that's not my real life but like yeah. it was fun to portray in my magazine for sure yeah I mean I've done that before in real life <laughs> it just we never took pictures of that kind of thing back <laughs> in my day we kept all that <laughs> right you're like the secret the 90s were a special time (laughs) um when was the first time like what was the first drug you ever did I mean besides weed and stuff like that um and and drinking that always seems drinking always seems to be like the first and then weed seems to be the second one for most people for me it was acid but like what was Mm -hmm. um like the first like harder drug that you ever did Uh, I want to say like molly I feel like there was a time when I was getting out of high school that it was just like the thing to do like everybody wanted to roll and like Mm -hmm. have a good time so I think that was it and then I did asset after that which was a cool experience like I'm not I don't really like rolling to me I get like a lot of anxiety Mm -hmm. so when I like feel like too much or I feel very overwhelmed or I feel like this feeling is coming on and there's nothing I can do about it like that gives me a lot of anxiety and I'm also like a very comfortable roller like I want to be like cuddled up like in a Mm -hmm. blanket like super cozy I want to watch movies or like do something like I don't want to get up and freaking dance and like (laughs) dance for five hours like that's not me like I like to lay down honestly and I feel like a lot of people don't like doing molly with me or ecstasy because like they want to party and like dance and I just want to lay on the couch yeah and like, and hang okay? out. I'm like, yeah I just want to lay here with my eyes closed like that just feels the best <laughs> you know, and like, okay, as long as you're fine I'm like yeah I'm fine yeah have I have definitely time. right I have definitely taken um at the time we called it ecstasy um or e when we would take it like we were always dancers especially if it was cut with speed and stuff like that I noticed when it was cut with like heroin or something like that I um that's when like we would dance for a little bit and then we would we would just lay out on the dance floor like staring at the ceilings at the lights and stuff like that so I get I get where some people want to dance and like be really active and then other times it was just like I just want to chill out like doing ecstasy like in a park and stuff like that is kind of fun and like yeah. I've, I've been to like many like outdoor parties and stuff like that where we would roll and just roll around <laughs> literally roll around in the grass <laughs> and literally, stuff like that sounds so fun which was um That's always super fun roll. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you're like I just want to cuddle up and snuggle um I get that I totally get that um so acid acid is one of my favorite drugs um this past summer as many people on the show know, I spent most of my quarantine in Central Park on acid. (laughs) I was like, what the fuck else am I going to do? And and mushrooms. um, 
I did get some, oh, I still have some. You may actually like these, but they're um, acid ecstasy and THC like rolled into one. You know, you know, candy oh, man, like, Sam. <laughs> yeah. He made them, oh, yeah. I love him. Yeah, Sam. I, know, I always get nervous though when people talk about like, what is it called? Like candy flipping or something. Mm-hmm. I always get so nervous to mix things. Like I get too, I get too afraid. Like when people talk about, oh, I took like three tabs of acid and like ecstasy pill and like all this stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, like, even you just talking about that it gives me anxiety like I can't feel my legs right now like <laughs> I can't imagine being on multiple things like I just feel like my body couldn't handle it like, yeah you're, you're like you're like one I thing just, you would just focus on that drug candy flipping yeah. is um candy flipping is a lot a lot of fun but I can understand why people um don't want to do it that's for sure because it is a, a, a different experience um, for sure. I've done like ecstasy with mushrooms, ecstasy and acid, um, ecstasy and cocaine don't really work out that well. They tend to cancel each other out, yeah. but, um, doing, doing cocaine while you're in like on mushrooms or, or acid too, it's kind of counterproductive to actually tripping. Cause like, um, you don't really feel the effects of the cocaine that much, but it's still like, because I, because like cocaine is one of my favorite drugs. Um, so it's like, you still have yeah. that, like, oh, I need to do another line, even though like nothing's happening because you're tripping. <laughs> like, nothing's happening. This isn't doing anything for me, but I love smoking when I'm on acid. Like, I just feel like I connect with like the plant. Like I look at it and mm-hmm. like it burning just looks so beautiful to me. Every time I'm always like, damn, I just fucking love weed so much. Like <laughs> that's my number one. Yeah. It's beautiful. Actually, last time I did acid, I, I jumped out of an airplane, but that was like before. Okay. About that crazy where I do acid and go skydiving, but (laughs) I jumped out of an airplane in Hawaii. So that was pretty fucking crazy experience. And then we went on a boat and dropped acid and I just kept looking up at the sky like, damn, I came out of there. Like (laughs) I really was floating through there today. Like it was the most spiritual thing ever to like fly through the sky and then like take acid and like blast off through the sky once again oh my god I can only imagine I would be the type of person who would drop acid and then go skydiving because I'm insane like that but I'm also a very seasoned acid taker (laughs) yeah yeah, I I can't be around people I think especially male energy kind of freaks me out but I was so scared skydiving regardless I wanted to ask the person strapped to me like will you just like hold me until we get up please like I'm so (laughs) terrified in this tiny little plane yeah like I wanted to be like please just hold me but yeah I I did it it was one of the most beautiful things ever and then I remember sitting on the boat and I sat on the same spot of the boat for the whole six hours and I literally fried like I looked at myself in the mirror afterwards and I was like oh no fuck man I look like a fucking lobster like my face is all red and my hair is all crazy and I still have that like weird perception of myself even yeah though yeah yeah cooking was hard and I was just like damn I look like a fucking lobster man like I don't even want to look at myself or like my vagina or anything like I can't when I said I'm like I cannot look at myself yeah there's definitely that thing that people have um looking in the mirror because they're afraid that they'll see something you know um I've never yeah. had you know, like we are like hallucinating, like hallucination or, or whatever. Um, I can't say hallucination. What the fuck is the word? Hallucinations. Hallucinations. There we go. Fuck. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, before uh, on acid or anything like that, but I don't have a problem looking into the mirror unless like, unless I like break out, like if I have a little bit of a breakout, I definitely can't cause I'm a picker and I'll be like in there for six hours. <laughs> doing that it was very very bad meth doesn't fuck up your skin acid will and adhd not a good combination but um but yeah like i've totally looked in the mirror and like looked in my eyes and i'm like maybe i'm just crazy but like i don't there's never but i i see why people don't like normally when i go in the bathroom when i'm on acid and stuff because i have like marble floors i just stare at my floor to me yeah. because it moves and shit. I had it friends so over. Cool. Right. I had friends over and I was like, I didn't realize, but I was in there for like a good solid 15, like almost 20 minutes. They're like, what are you doing? Like, are you okay? And I'm like, oh shit, sorry. I'm just like staring at my floor. <laughs> just like completely in a this whole other crazy. world. It yeah. It like moves on its own. It's beautiful. Even just like the sky, nature, everything just looks so beautiful. 
<laughs> where's um where's your favorite place to trip like do you like tripping like more in nature and stuff like that like a boat is super fun to do acid and yeah, stuff hawaii. like that anywhere in hawaii doesn't matter where just like, yeah <laughs> in hawaii is the best vibes for sure i think we tried it it's funny because me and my uh, best friend carmen caliente we draw, like we go to hawaii together sometimes and we've done acid together there like almost every time mm-hmm. and then i think for fourth of july our friend had sent us like the same acid that we would take the orange sunshine it's like super freaking strong mm-hmm. but we were like let's just go to the beach and take it and we'll see fireworks and like it'll be fun and we go and we're like at manhattan beach like it's such a shitty ass beach and there's like people everywhere and we just like we were like this is just not it like we're stuck to the tapestry we're having a good time like I brought pizza in a Ziploc bag and like it looked like a brain like with all the, <laughs> the like condensation and everything I was like don't look at the fucking pizza and she looked of course and was like oh god oh god cover it up and I was like yeah there's some little kid throwing a frisbee and I was like every time it would hit someone I could like feel the awkwardness and I was like man please don't let that happen to me and sure enough like his frisbee came and they hit me straight in the fucking head and I was like <sighs> and this little kid like comes over like pop, 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 yeah pop, and I'm like oh, okay I like hand him the frisbee I'm like uh, All right. like, uh okay <laughs> fucking take it I was like Ugh. and he walks away like I'm a fucking weirdo and I just remember being like the next time we took acid in Hawaii, we just looked at each other and we were like, what were we thinking? Thinking we could get this in Manhattan Beach. Like, what? How do we think we could ever recreate this other than here? Like, yeah. in Hawaii. It's not <laughs> anywhere. So, um, so you can no. eat on acid because a lot of people can't eat on acid. I no. love eating. I mean, like, some- Yeah, we brought the pizza thinking like maybe we would eat it at some point. We'll probably need it yeah it was just a terrible idea it didn't get eaten and it really just looked like a fucking brain like it was not a good idea (laughs) it takes a good six hours before I could eat or do anything regularly again yeah yeah because acid acid trips normally last between like six to eight hours depending on how strong and and definitely how much you have taken um yeah there have been plenty of times I don't know when I started eating I think it was in high school, like, like one time when I was in high school, um, I started, I would eat, do you know, like the chef for your D raviolis, like in a can, I used to eat those cold, like straight out of the can, like a fucking oh, socio <laughs> I'm dead. And for some reason, this particular day I was on house and it was like dead of winter. I had like three cans in a row, which is like, just, it's disgusting, but I loved like the way the texture felt in my mouth. For some reason. Oh god. It was like all about like like textures and stuff like that. So there are like certain foods and like candies and stuff like that that I'll get like if I'm on acid or mushrooms. I mean it is a different type of trip, but yeah, there's certain things that I love that I'm like, I want to have this in my mouth right now because now I know that that's fun for me. I could never eat. I don't think I could do it. I'd probably throw up. Some people, um, acid like kind of messes with their stomach a little bit. Like I definitely know like the next day the acid shits and like acid farts are disgusting. It sounds, it it smells like someone died in my ass. It's really unpleasant. It's so unpleasant, but the, the fun part, you know, it's it's fine. It's not that, (laughs) but yeah. Yeah. It's like shrooms do me worse than acid. Like acid to me is always so like, just seems like more clean. I don't know why to me mushrooms like I really feel like I'm being poisoned kind of and that's like really what it is it's like it's poison basically and that's why your brain does that but like yeah for some reason it's like easier for me to do acid than mushrooms like mushrooms kind of make me feel more like weird inside or like it's more of like a physical kind of thing yeah Yeah. I I I I I could see that a bunch of people I know a couple people actually that um that prefer acid over mushrooms because of that, because of like how they make their stomach feel, because it almost kind of, that's yeah. why I like taking mushrooms more with ecstasy or, or Molly than, than acid, because it gives you that extra like body thing. You know what I mean? Like I like um, micro dosing with mushrooms and it, um, it gives you kind of like that warm, fuzzy feeling, like, like right before you're like getting drunk, you know, just that like happy kind of euphoric kind of thing. That's why uh, microdosing is super fun. And it doesn't, um, it's not, 
as strong, but I've definitely taken a bunch of mushrooms where my stomach felt like it was in a nut <laughs> for sure. Yeah, awesome. My microdose, I was so happy. I remember like I got in a whole thing of mushrooms for the magazine because mm-hmm. I wanted like that's one thing you can't really fake. Like it has to be like real mushrooms because yeah. you know, like like real drug enthusiasts will know. Yeah, you can't get a portabella and be like, this is. Yeah. (laughs) So I got this whole big ass fucking bag and I still have it. I'm like, I don't know what to do with this, but there was like the tiniest little, like little mushroom with a little cap. It was so cute. And I was like, you know what? I would try this. I like put it in this like egg roll thing that I had and I ate it. And I was Mm -hmm. just like so happy. Like, I just remember like, maybe I should do that. Cause I've been depressed. So maybe I should freaking microdose or something. Yeah. Microdose always- does help with like depression. It helps with a lot like, it helped me, especially over quarantine and stuff like that, like microdosing for sure. Um, it definitely helps with depression and it helps like figure uh, stuff out a little bit. And then I'll be there sitting like my whole day will be fucked. And I'll just be like, oh, man, I took too much. Like, how, how am I going to know what if I'm taking the same amount every time? Because they're like actual mushrooms. So I'm like, yeah, well, one way to tell is that like, because it kind of has like that blue. It will have like that blue greenish kind of dark streaks and stuff. The philosoph of whatever word. Another word I can say. Yeah. So um, the bluer they are, the stronger that mushroom will be normally. So if it has like a little bit in it, they have um, some mushrooms, um, especially if they pick them like super soon. But I remember um, this was uh, the story was told on here, but it was um, the shroom and Thanksgiving weekend when I was a stripper and uh, one of my ex-boyfriends, my old roommate. Yeah, we had a bunch of mushrooms and they were just like the cute, tiny little ones. And they were like, they were perfect. Like, I, oh God, I love them. But yeah, they were just, they were so cute and they were easy to eat because mushrooms are disgusting. They're, they taste so fucking bad. It's like, every time I do it, I'm like, why is so bad? It's like, ugh, I have to like swallow it down with beer. There's been a couple of times I'm just like, I wonder if I could just swallow them whole like a pill. Like, would I have the same effect or is chewing it up necessary? <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. Um, I don't know how big of things I could swap. Well, okay. No, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> I don't know about, um, try, uh, um, lemon juice or any sort of like acidic type juice. Like I've taken an eighth and crushed it up and put it in lemon juice mm-hmm. and then drank all that. And I was tripping so hard in like 15 minutes, like super fast yeah. immediately just tripping balls. Ooh. I don't know. I, I feel like the lemon juice even makes it stronger. It's like it kicks in super fast. And it's well, it's the, like it's the, uh, if I remember correctly, um, I re- I'm not sure if this is an urban legend. This is definitely something I probably could have looked up a long ass time ago. But they always said that like vitamin C helps like intensify trips and stuff like that. But I never heard it with mushrooms. I always heard that it worked with like acid. Um, like acid yeah. and vitamin C. I remember uh, one of my friends at like the raves we used to go to, he always had like those vitamin C things because he was just the acid kid. So he's always popping vitamin C tabs. And I'm like, I don't know if that works. And you know, when, and when you're younger and then like you're already fucked up at a rave and then like, you know, people are having oranges. And so I was like, I'll have an orange. Be like, yeah, no, it totally got me fucked up. It's like, no, you don't know <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I was already tripping. So who knows? But maybe like just because it was like a liquid, you know, because you, I think maybe like grinding it up and stuff like that and putting it into a liquid, all the chocolates and stuff like that is great, but you can still taste it. The taste is disgusting. Yeah, it's so it bad. Terrible. I got to figure <laughs> out how to make some chocolate or something. Cause I have this whole fucking ounce of shrooms. I don't know what to do with it. Like, Dude, call Candyman. He can tell you how to do it. <laughs> Probably no. like dry blend it into like a powder and then you melt the chocolate and then you get like little candy, like molds or something like that. And put them in. Yeah. Some are always going to be stronger than the others. Cause you're not a professional, but Sam always seems to make it, you know, yeah. very, <laughs> he's good at, he's good at making candies. That's why he practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah. When it comes, when it comes with that stuff, he actually had, um, well, he had some really good acid this past summer. They were like peacocks and, um, Ever since like, he's been trying to give me this, this other stuff right now, he gave me candies that are acid and mushrooms mixed together. And I'm like, dude, I just want those peak. Like it was really, really, really good ass. I know I always have, I have like everything on me all the time, just in case you never know. I want to have like Mm -hmm. a drug roulette party where I have this, like one of those carnival spin wheels and you Mm -hmm. just write the different 
drugs on it and then everyone like that comes you have to spin it at least once and then yeah. whatever drug you land on you have to do yeah so it's like you can spin it as many times as you want or you can spin it once but I just think it would be like a really fun crazy party to have <laughs> that would actually be <laughs> and you dress up as like Vanna White or something <laughs> yeah, or no wait oh all over the house right. like all the lights <laughs> on all the neon lights on just like set ourselves up just to have a good time um so what like have you ever tried anything stronger have you ever dabbled in like heroin or um like pills or anything like that no I haven't I mean thankfully I've never done heroin or meth I feel like I don't know I don't know I feel like I would not be able to just like be the same ever again I'd be Mm -hmm. like I'm honestly terrified I think I'd be too scared but yeah I just I don't know I I've tried all other things, I guess, like almost everything else, prescription pills, like Xanax and stuff, but Mm -hmm. it's just bad. I'm just scared. I'm afraid. I'm so terrified that like just taking something and that being the last, because like I lost my aunt last year to Mm -hmm. a fentanyl overdose. So I'm always like so cautious and like trying to be very careful. But then again, like it just feels so good to like not feel anything like at all, just for like Mm-hmm. even if it's just a couple hours like I'm so stressed I have so much stuff going on like I'm sad and I've got a lot of things going on so like it just it feels good to just feel nothing like I hate saying that or like mm-hmm. I can't like you know like I can't admit it to my family like my family would fucking kill me but like it just I just can't like I sometimes I need to just like not think not feel or anything and just like be chill yeah well, I mean, that's a reason why a lot of people, you know, dabble in, in all drugs, not even just the strong ones. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's not just for fun, but yeah, sometimes it's, you know, to make us feel better or to make us feel anything at all. And sometimes feeling something is feeling nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it definitely has that effect and, and drugs definitely, um, they definitely get a bad rap for that kind of thing. Cause a lot of times when people do use, you know, recreationally, and, and stuff like that, people automatically assume it's like, oh, you know, they're automatically depressed or it's, it's automatically this and that it's like, yeah, sometimes it is, but it's like, how is me, you know, smoking a bowl or micro dosing different than taking a Prozac, in, you know, or like an antidepressant or, or something like that. Um, it's just feels differently. I I've read, um, I read a study where they're actually like, they're going to start maybe using uh, mushrooms to, to help with, uh, with depression and stuff like that. And it's like, that's great. Cause it literally comes from the ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's So natural. I've always been like the natural way or like weed, but like sometimes like weed just isn't enough. Like, yeah. I love weed, but, like sometimes it just doesn't cut it. Like, it yeah. just doesn't Oh no, absolutely. Enough. Like I get, like, I have a prescription for, for Xanax. I don't, I don't like Xanax. I never really been a big pill person um if I really need to take Xanax like I always cut them in half like I have a little pill cutter I'll I'll cut them in half um normally when I take if if I'm really taking Xanax it's because I did too much cocaine it's like okay now I need to take a Xanax to go to sleep but I don't do that anymore because I stopped doing cocaine this month Uh, (laughs) like this month I stopped doing it but um I really like for like anxiety and panic attacks and stuff like that. Um, I take beta blockers. I really like beta blockers. They're not addictive. Um, they're great for like doing comedy or public speaking and like all this other stuff. Um, I don't really have like that anxiety of going up on stage anymore as I did when I first started, but I realized that like these beta blockers like work way better than, than the, um, than like Xanax or any antidepressant really. Cause it, they technically just kind of slow your heart down. (laughs) They like thin out your blood to like slow your heart down (laughs) or whatever. So you get drunk very fast on them, but uh, you're just a cheaper date is all that's it (laughs) it's just a cheaper thing i don't need anything that helps me get drunk faster because i I do that on my own yeah are you a big drinker do you like to drink i don't i it's very rare like i have this like alter ego named bendra that like comes out randomly Mm -hmm. that will just go on a bender that's kind of where it came from but it's funny because my friends are like people will always be like we want Bendro to come out or we want to party with Bendro. I'm like, 
I don't decide when she comes out. Like, it really is just so random. Like, I'll randomly be like, I want to get fucked up tonight. And I will. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so random. Or most of the time, like, I don't want to drink. But, like, very rarely she comes out and she, like, drinks a lot and parties and is fun. But other than that, like, I really don't like drinking all that much because it just makes me feel like shit. Like, Mm -hmm. I hate like uneasy Mm -hmm. or like the room is spinning or like my stomach is turning like I hate feeling like that and like feeling like shit the next day like it's just not is not it so yeah like I'm like a chill smoke weed like maybe take some Xanax and like chill then drink yeah type thing it gets worse as you get older the hangovers like it takes days now for me. Like I actually, like, I, I kind of have that, um, that same thing too, where it's like, all of a sudden they'll just be like, I'm going to drink today. And then I'll drink an obnoxious amount of alcohol, just an insane amount. And then, yeah, I'll be like, okay, well now I need to take the next two days, maybe three (laughs) days off to like actually recuperate. It's horrible because I'm from Wisconsin. So I was born an alcoholic basically, or drunk, just Miller high life bottle. Um, yeah, I like drinking, but it is that thing that like, and it, cause also because of quarantine and stuff like that and working in bars constantly, cause I could go and do, you know, a couple of spots and have like one or two beers and then go home and be fine, you know, and not like need to have more, but because like, I'm not going out as much now for the entire year when I do go out, I'm like, Oh, my brain is like, Oh, it's drinking day. Like today's our drinking day. It's like, no it's not but my brain is like yes it is so <laughs> it's so yeah, bad I like, I like shotgunning white claws I think that's kind of what started like in November I think I shotgun my first white claw and then that's when like Bendra was born because then it's like I just liked I don't know why shotgunning is just so much easier and it's like once I I can't just shotgun one like once I do one it like starts something inside of me where I need like 20 minutes and then I'm ready to shotgun the next one and like that's actually how I got my Instagram deleted is I shotgun like five white claws and was just really drunk on Instagram (laughs) live like pulled my titties out and had them out the whole time and I was like deep throating this giant black dildo I had them pour white claw down the dildo into my mouth and then afterwards I was like guys like I'm still here like I'm sleeping with the CEO of Instagram like I'm here to stay next day deleted and like lady calls me and is like yeah, they're writing these articles. So you might want to, you know, comment on them because they're going to come out anyways. And I was like, okay. And it's like (laughs) claiming that I got deleted for like claiming I was sleeping with the CEO. And I was like, I think it's because kids were out, but it's definitely because your titties were out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But like Facebook had to release a statement saying like, I'm not getting preferable treatment and everything I was saying was false. Yeah. And I'll yeah, I probably won't be getting that account back after they had released a statement and everything. I was like, yeah, I just figured it was like such like a joke that people would know it was a joke. But I guess like people thought well, it people was don't really know what jokes are these days, yeah. to be honest. Uh, trust me on that. <laughs> and like it yeah. is real pathetic when it comes with the um, with the joke thing and with Instagram, too. Cause I know, I think one of the reasons why they may have like shadow banned me or whatever from, um, cause I have, I've done nothing wrong. Like I have no violation. I think I have one violation on my account or, or whatever is cause I keep tweeting them. I'm like, you guys will sit here and allow men in these tiny ass little speedos nipples all out. Like there's one of my followers who literally like his profile picture is just of his nipple. I'm like, how is that? Okay. But women yeah. can't show their nipples. I'm like, all you guys are doing is over sexualizing the female body and not the male body. I'm like, you guys are perpetuating this fucking stigma that we're only meant for sex and not, and not men at all. Although uh, deep throating a big black dildo probably didn't help. Yeah. Cause that. I was <laughs> mad at me and I was like, I was like, listen, they were upset. Cause I had previously gotten away with posting pictures, showing my nipples or like having a see-through t-shirt. And I was like, up until mm-hmm. that day, any picture I posted, like I was fighting for the equality, but like us being able to post the same thing or like even Playboy, like mm-hmm. I lost my recent account on Instagram because I spoke out and like had posted pictures that Playboy had posted where the girls are literally topless and they just barely like, they barely mm-hmm. blur out their nipple. And I was like, dude, how is this okay? I should have known nobody was going to listen and I was going to get deleted. But mm-hmm. I just like was so upset because I'm like, how is that fair for you to allow it for some people and then like take away 
my two million follower like account that I had built up over years like and just taken away like that Mm -hmm. and like I was like I was fighting for nipple equality up until like the point the dildo came out then I was like (laughs) I understand like I went too far I was really drunk and I was just just, like on a high getting away with things and thought it would be funny and like fun yeah and and it was funny I saw a little bit of the video I was like this bitch (laughs) okay we regret it been downhill since then so if anyone like really was upset with me over that like I hope you're happy because life has gone to shit since then so like it's not oh, all rainbows no. and butterflies like it's yeah it started when I lost my Instagram account and since then it's just been like oh shit, no shit, well shit. there's a lot of things um because people use Instagram for like work like I use it for work and and stuff like that you know promoting shows And then by, by them, like blacklisting me like that or shadow banning me or whatever the fuck you want to call it is it's like, it's ridiculous. There's no reason for that to happen. Someone definitely over there does not like me, (laughs) whoever works at Instagram, because I'm verified on Facebook, on Twitter, but, um, yeah, Instagram, they, they refuse do they actually like my, because my followers normally always grow and stuff like that. I normally get like a hundred new followers a week on, on, you know, within a week or two weeks, pending on how much I'm posting and stuff. My Instagram followers haven't moved in like six months. And since they did this basically, and it's, it's really like, it is, um, I want to know who this fucking petty little bitch is to be honest. It's crazy. Somebody must, because my second account, I was like, all right, I'm never going to get that one back. So I made a second one. And then I requested to get verified through the app. Mm-hmm. And I think same day I got the badge. So I was like, somebody there like likes me. They're like, okay, she fucked up. She can't have her old account back, but here we'll give her this. Yeah. And then I lost that one again. So now I'm just like, you know what? I oh, So you don't have know. an Instagram account at all anymore I right do. now? I started oh. one just because I was like, it's just what everybody uses. Like everyone just asks for it. And like mm-hmm. I'm losing a huge like part of my fan base that like only uses Instagram yeah. or, like is really only on there so I did start a new one it's Kendra Sunderland x3 like it's just it's so yeah. frustrating to like be so afraid of what to post or like have to censor myself so much that I'm like afraid mm-hmm. to even write silly captions or like say things that I yeah because like they do afraid. like with certain hashtags you know that they'll like black out or shadow ban certain types of hashtags that anything even for like sexual health stuff it's so bad. Like I was nervous about like this podcast, you know, doing like talking about drugs and stuff. I'm like, what hashtags can I do? Hashtag cocaine and like still get followers. You know what I mean? Or like be, be oh, shadow God. banned or, or whatever. Yeah. Instagram is, um, they're very Puritan is when it comes to that. And it's just Facebook is even worse now. Like you can't repost jokes at all like like I posted, oh, men are dumb, the meme. And I got suspended <laughs> for 24 hours. I'm like, I even put a laughy face like this is clearly a joke. They're like, this is hate speech. I'm like, you are correct. I do hate men, but this was like, it's so, yeah, like, it's, it's so ridiculous. Joke. Yeah. My magazine Instagram was deleted instantly. I think because the picture was like my tongue with a tab on it, but like that I, to me, I was like, the tab doesn't have anything on it. Like, it yeah, it's a picture. Tab, it's so, art. <laughs> paper on my tongue like I didn't think anything of it but yeah the account was like instantly deleted and I was like you know what I just don't think any like I have maybe like two or three Instagram safe photos from the magazine itself because it's so explicit like I don't Mm -hmm. even I'm like either I have to make it a point every shoot for it to take Instagram safe photos or just say fuck it and like yeah it's just was it for instagram yeah it doesn't instagram needs to get its fucking shit together when it comes to this like get over it because here in the city in new york like women could be topless like it's totally legal for like for women to be topless anywhere in the city which is great um i know a couple of girls have definitely come out here you know i I believe like bonnie rodden was one you know and they'll just take pictures all around like Times square and stuff just with their titties out but I'm like that kind of defeats the purpose of us just being like titties being normalized and not so sexualized <laughs> but yeah. it's really hard to just desexualize yeah it's <laughs> like, hard to normal. desexualize titties it really <laughs> it is because you see them and you're just like wow okay. titties. Like, yeah okay. yeah 
but they're also like they're they're baby feeders basically like that's why we have them we have them to feed babies <laughs> yeah. like, i did not ask to have these giant boobs so like i don't appreciate the one the back pain and two like the stigma that people like put on it so. yeah it's so it's fucking it's ridiculous like there's been a couple of times um because like even like tanning like i don't like tan lines and shit like that and so like but also like going out because I know because my boobs are so big, I there'll be tons of pictures taken. You know what I mean? Like it will just like I won't be able to just be like a dude. I can't just be topless. Um, if I had smaller titties, I would never wear a bra. Oh, my God. Never wear a fucking right, bra. Same. I, same. I, was, I almost like like I like my natural boobs because I like them like the bounce and like they're squishy and stuff like that mm-hmm. but I just like I envy so much like girls that they could just sit like, up and be like and Boop. So yeah and like you don't even have to wear a bra and they look like this like yes. no mine are down here like and they're just mine are almost like, in my belly button yeah. now I'm pretty sure I have no idea they do get um push-ups help with um with the sagginess at that <laughs> by the way too yeah, I remember when I used to be super fit like they were like super perky and like bigger and stuff and I'm mm-hmm. just like Ugh. but yeah. also <laughs> now that I'm like not working out all the time and eating Domino's pizzas all the time like my butt's getting bigger so I'm like I don't I can't decide where to go from here <laughs> My butt actually got bigger. I gained 20 pounds over quarantine. I'm actually within like, since uh, after my surgery. Yeah. Like I even started eating in bed. I was just like, I was really stoned one night. I'm like, I'm so hungry, but I don't want to like sit in the kitchen because normally I'll sit in the kitchen or on the couch. So I just brought some chips and I'm like, I'm eating chips. And I'm like, who am I? Because I don't like watch TV. Like that is for like fucking and sleeping. And I was like, oh my God. Well, I have social anxiety. So I realized like, that not being around people helped me gain 20 pounds. So once stuff starts actually opening up, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to lose my ass. But yeah, no, I totally have a butt now. And none of my pants fit. <laughs> oh, that's the worst part. I'm like, my pants are still barely hanging on there. But I did a photo shoot recently or like I had this outfit on and these people just kept complimenting my butt. And I was like, this is so rare. I'm like, well, I've never known this feeling of like right, I'm having a butt. Compliments. I know I was like stop stop they're like no really and I'm like I just Domino's pizza like I don't know I just right <laughs> and the other night I wanted to order like Domino's pizza and these chicken wings that I like and also Dave's hot chicken and like french fries and mm-hmm. I was like I can't order all three so I went for two of them I was like if I I, I really should thing. live my best life and get all three but I was like I can't eat all this I, who am I kidding like my eyes are bigger than my stomach I did that with um, Taco Bell yesterday. I was really gross and had Taco Bell. Because whenever you order Taco Bell, even if you're, well, I mean, I'm always stoned, but I was extra stoned. So like you do order so much food and then you eat like three fucking things. I don't know like what they put in their food that just makes you so full automatically. But like, I still have three tacos. I'm like, I'm not going to eat them because you can't eat cold fucking, it's gross. Like you can't warm up fast food. It's just, you can't. Yeah. I've never, I mean, maybe like a burrito, like a bean and cheese burrito. I might heat back up, but anything else like, yeah, with like, yeah, with the lettuce and any veggies and stuff like that, it's just the sour cream. It's no, it's, it's it's unpleasant. I do love that. You love Domino's pizza. That's one of my first like real jobs was I was the phone girl for Domino's pizza. Um, but living in New York, that's blasphemous. <laughs> we can... I'm dead. I literally like so someone was like, Don't you want like you live in LA? Like, don't you want like someplace better? Like someplace that's like, I don't know, like more like, just different, like not as generic. And I was like, No, like I want dominoes. Like it's consistent. I always know what I'm gonna get. Like I like the seasoning on the crust, like yeah, I their like sauce the and sauce. stuff was always good. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm like, don't hate on it it's fire <laughs> it's it's good. although I haven't had um I had one of my friends over and we had um she's like how about Papa John's pizza I was like we have Papa John's in New York like I just assumed pizza uh-huh. had Papa John's and like Domino's wouldn't exist in a city like you know what I mean like New York right. but yeah I, I like the um I like the butter dipping stuff or or whatever the butter garlic whatever the fuck that shit is. Oh, yeah, it's like a buttery garlic sauce. Yeah, oh. it's so good. It's it's disgusting. I guess um he's a racist. 
So uh, <laughs> so me, I guess I was like, everybody's a racist. Fuck Papa John's. But yeah, I uh, Domino's pizza. That's Everything hilarious. Chick-fil-A is homophobic, but still love Chick-fil-A. Dude, their bigotry is delicious. Why is it so delicious? <laughs> no, I mean, even my gay best friend is like, fuck it. Like, I love Chick-fil-A. Like, <laughs> it's so oh, good. Oh, it's oh, like, it's not Chick-fil-A. fair. It's not fair. Like, it's definitely, it's not fair. It's like, why... It's like one of those things where it's like separating the artist from the art. You know, you know what I mean? Like like David Bowie and J- uh, and uh, Jimmy Page, like like they used to have sex with like underage girls and like no one really said anything. Now. I mean, now they're fucking dead or like even like someone like Kevin Spacey or, or Michael Jackson. It's like you got to separate the art from the artist. So it's just really you got to separate the chicken from the homophobes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I mean, like the other day I woke up so hungover I was so like I was like yes I'm getting Chick-fil-A breakfast like 10 count chicken minis and I got a large lemonade I was like yes like this will bring me back to life this will be good and I like go to stick the straw in the lemonade and it falls off my bed stand and just goes all over the floor like I didn't even get one sip and the large lemonade just like all over my floor and I just started crying I was like you know like I can't keep living. Something's got to give because I cannot <laughs> keep living this way to where spilling my Chick Fil A like makes me want to fucking die. Like, die. please, like, oh, well, of course I had to reorder it. I was like, I'm not gonna just not have lemonade. So then I ordered the gallon as well. So I was like, I'm never gonna have this fucking problem again. That the whole they do actually have good lemonade too. That's hilarious. Oh, I would uh, definitely, um, I would definitely try some some microdosing with a little bit. Of of depression little bout of depression you seem to be having i would stay away from molly for sure because that will kind of the next couple of days is always real real low but yeah, yeah definitely i stay away from that on my own i'm too scared so yeah, yeah I, should. I, definitely should. I feel like i'm just i just have to get over the fear of like maybe sometimes i accidentally trip a little too hard it's okay yeah just make sure you know look at the blue stuff see how much is of that is on there uh, I mean, that's, crazy that's obviously not like, a great wow, measurement. It looks yeah. crazy. They're like super dope and blue. And I was just like, wow, this looks really cool. But I don't know what yeah. I'm going to do with this fucking bag. Uh, like the stems and stuff, like chop them up, you know, chop them up in little pieces. Take one, see how that feels. If you need a little bit more, maybe take a little bit more. But yeah, chop them up. They're mushrooms. Right. You got knives. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, yeah, you need to. I recommend it. Uh, maybe get a friend, you know, and do a little spiritual cleansing. <laughs> it will help for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's good to see your beautiful face and your titties. I'm so good thank to see you. you. <laughs> I'll come back to New York very soon. Hopefully, Lainey wants to do like a whole party for the magazine since we didn't get to have like a launch party and stuff so when we yeah can. yeah stuff is starting to open up a little bit here and um oh, our curfew is now midnight not 11 p.m and that Ooh. is Ooh, girl, that's what's killing me the most is the fucking curfew. Because most of the time I'm like, I don't leave my house till like 11 midnight, you know, because everything's open until fucking four normally. So, yeah. So like being in especially New York City at fucking 11 or even 12, I'm just like, oh, my God, I didn't even have a curfew as a kid. Like, what is this curfew thing? We're grown ass adults. I'm vaccinated now, too. I don't give a fuck. I'm ready to lick people. I'm like, I don't care anymore get your shit together government or whatever the fuck is happening um so where can people find you i am spiel um well my new instagram is kendra sunderland x3 twitter is ks library girl um you could check out my flashlight you could check out the magazine at smdmagazine.com uh, my website, kendersunderlandvip.com has like all my full length videos. You can buy them clip store style and you can buy anything I've like worn or touched. And I have an OnlyFans, onlyfans.com slash KS library girl. <laughs> look at me, uh, look for me on like browsers, um, website cause I'm contracted to them. So that's how you can watch my pornos. That's right. You are a brand. That's everything. That's a lot. Girl. A lot. yeah well you're a busy lady you're, you have a whole little porno empire going girl <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is a lot of work people don't realize how much fucking work it is and then you have to fuck on top of it you're like jesus christ 
That's why I quit. I'm lazy (laughs) and I'm old. Um, You can find this wonderful show, How to Do Drugs, at um, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, everywhere, wherever the fuck you're listening to this. Uh, YouTube. Also check out the Twitter account, How to Do Drugs, and How to Do Drugs Pod on Instagram for as long as um, they'll let me stay up there. (laughs) All right. Bye, guys.